Awesome. Okay, we'll just wait for everyone to trickle through. Um, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Holly Muller and I am campaign manager here at ARCAPRO. Um, thank you so much for joining us at um, today's ARCAPRO webinar in conjunction with Peter Fell. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping before we start. If everyone can just make sure that their mics are on mute throughout the webinar. Um, and any questions that you have, just pop them into the Q&A section um, at the bottom of your screen. And we will um, have those answered um, by our panelists at the end of the, end of the end of their talk. Um, so without taking up any more of your time, I'll now pass over to Paul Dwight from Peter Fell to kick off today's webinar. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Holly, and uh, welcome everybody and really appreciate you joining us today. Um, we're really delighted to, to have this webinar and it was um, it really comes from the 2022 ARCUPRO Concrete Innovation Campaign. The campaign showcased exceptional creativity and innovation in the use of concrete. It highlighted its versatility and potential as a building material in some of New Zealand's finest architecture projects. So it brings me pleasure to represent Peter Fell and our esteemed guests and uh, they have some fantastic projects that they will be, be discussing with you. So um, they were hearing from three distinguished guys that I mentioned before, and I will say guys, but I'm sure representative of their teams as well, because it's not just a one man band um, in many of these projects. And so we're gonna be discussing the latest projects, techniques and design possibilities with a colored concrete. They'll also explore the environmental benefits and practicality of applications using colored concrete. So without further ado, I'm gonna get on with it and I'm gonna introduce you to firstly, Pete Boswell. Bosley, sorry. Nothing like getting your name wrong, is it Pete? Um, so Pete is, uh, Pete has um, been in the industry for many years, over 30 years. Pete Bosley, the architect, is uh, known for his iconic designs focus on relationship and between architecture and the environment. I think you'll find um, from this project that speaks uh, so highly of this gentleman's skill sets. Uh, and I'm gonna hand over to you, Pete, on your fantastic project. Uh, thank you, Paul. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for having us on board here. It's, it's very exciting to be able to talk about concrete uh, and this particular project. Um, and we'll move along quite quickly because I've probably got more slides than I deserve um, for, to, to explain it. But it's a house that we're talking about on top of the cliffs at um, uh, Takapuna in Auckland, facing out towards the harbour in Rangitoto. It's a house that uh, my partner Finn Scott and I designed and it was recently, uh, it was finished recently. Um, the client's a client we've done about 20 projects for over the years, uh, so I've got to know them pretty well. And in this case, they, they wanted a, a building that uh, expressed a sense of longevity. Um, and they, they're sort of an intergenerational household. They've got three generations come and go all the time. And, and so it's a pretty interesting setup. Um, so next slide, Holly. You can see it's a long, thin site uh, with the harbour and Rangitoto to the right. So we designed a series of uh, concrete walls and fins, which are parallel through the site, through the building. And they keep taking your eye and your memory out towards the towards the harbour and the sea, which is what the site's all about. Um, uh, no, go back, go back. It's um, uh, built by Challenge Construction, but the concrete was done by Bannon Construction, Ross Bannon, who calls himself a concretologist. He's an expert in uh, concrete, uh, supplied by Allied Concrete. Uh, it was a standard mix, but we had Peter Fell uh, Super White Plus Concrete uh, Oxide in it. Um, and um, we didn't use a white aggregate, we used standard aggregate. We did a lot of experiments to get the, to get the, um, uh, the mix right. It's got a Nirvana system with a, a lot of it's a double wall concrete with insulation in it. Um, and the next slide shows us the upstairs, which is it's basically two wings with an exterior link. So you go outside to get to the inside, the, the main living rooms are on the right and the bedrooms uh, above that, the main bedrooms above that, and then a guest wing off to the left. And they wrap around a, a kind of courtyard, which is it's sheltered and very sunny. And on the next slide, we can see it in, in 3D. Um, and the red lines sort of indicate that uh, parallel uh, fin, concrete fins and walls and uh, large beams above, which send your contacts out to keep you in touch with the harbour. 
uh, but then there's the uh, the bite taken out of it to um, create a nice warm sunny courtyard and there's a, a thing we call a wrapper which is a screen of vertical cedars which are enclosing the two parts of the building and kind of combining them in a sculptural kind of way. Next, uh, we can see the entry space. So it's a very simple palette of materials. It's the, the creamy white concrete, uh, marble above that, uh, GRC fins, uh, a fascia above that, and then the cedar. And they form, along with the aluminium windows, they form the behind a basic palette of the whole house. Next sharp slide shows us the internal courtyard and that's that wrapper of fins that we saw in the last one on the outside above the entry wraps around and, and reappears wrapping around the courtyard and creates fantastic sort of warm sunny sheltered space and the next one you can see that wrapper sitting up on the concrete fins which are <laughs> became you know part of the uh, language of the building really was to use the concrete and um, uh, to create that strength of um, connection to the harbour. The next one's looking back in the courtyard from the other end and you can start to see the sort of sculptural forms of the concrete uh, and big covered terraces getting the afternoon sun but still being able to see through to the harbour. And then even more obvious from downstairs in the next slide where you can look right through the front, um, <clears throat> front wing of the house from the back wing. And using every opportunity we can to sort of uh, utilize the qualities of concrete on the right there, you can see the fireplace and the wood box, but also above that, uh, oh, there's a recess for the barbecue. And then above that, there's a, a light scoop that comes down from above the roof and um, brings light under the canopy so that you get some nice um, changes in natural light. Uh, and talking about natural light on the next slide, there's a reflecting pool here, which starts to um, send light up onto the ceiling and also some gargoyles, projecting gargoyles, which are um, sort of overflows from the roof, uh, which we would love to be flying with water all the time. But of course, they're only supposed to flow when the gutters are blocked. So unfortunately, they don't flow very often. <laughs> We'd like to see them flowing a lot more. Um, the next slide though, you can see more of the, oh, not that one, skip that one. You can see more of the reflections up onto the roof uh, as they come through from the inside. And uh, the, the way that the natural light sort of lets the roof over the living space float above the concrete. So you get this beautiful lightness, even though the materials are pretty uh, solid and have this lovely kind of sense of longevity to them. And the next one, the client, one of the client's um, requirements, one of his few requirements was um, to, for a, he's got a fantastic collection of art, but he didn't want to live in an art gallery. He wanted it to be a house uh, and comfortable and cozy. And it needed to be a place that was comfortable for one person to live in or six or seven adults and grandchildren when they come back and stay for extended periods of time. So it had to have a fair bit of flexibility to it. Um, and uh, in the next one, you can see the um, sculptural nature of the concrete starting to appear here. So we utilized curves and um, different different curves to let the natural light reflect the concrete beautifully, give different um, different aspects to the color. And you can see some of the beautiful artworks that we've got. So there was a lot of effort went into uh, the concrete before it was poured, of course, figuring out where all the services went, where the PowerPoints were. Some of the artworks have um, video uh, requirements. So we had to get cabling to the back of some of them. Um, and this, we're here, we're looking at a long, slow stair that sort of leads up uh, and back up to the bedroom. So it's very relaxed. It's, we didn't quite have a wide enough site for a ramp, otherwise we would have like put a ramp in there, but we put a slow stair in there instead. And then on the next one, you can see more of that <coughs> opportunities for natural light to come in through skylights and always taking up the, um, the, uh, the opportunities offered by light hitting the concrete. Also, you can see here the, um, the tie rods, all of which were carefully located in every wall. And Ross Bannon made beautiful purpose-made little concrete cones to put in the tie rod uh, recesses so that they matched the color of the concrete. We didn't want to hide them, but we didn't want bright orange cones in there either. And on the next one, the light, once again, is reflecting through very deep window uh, recesses to give us gorgeous um, to bring out the qualities of the concrete and the other materials just by animating the house with um, light. 
natural light rather than having to use artificial to do that. And then on the next one, the, the main bedroom, it's still got the concrete, but you can, you know, it's a really soft, sensual kind of uh, concrete uh, and um, mixed in with the, um, the carpet and the leather and timber to create a really a gorgeous kind of softness to it, despite it being an essentially a concrete house. More softness was introduced uh, in the next one, Holly, by a commissioned artwork by a um, <clears throat> Dutch felt artist called Claudia Jongstra. He's got a really good international reputation and I wanted something to sort of separate the entry space from the dining living spaces so it could become more closed down. And so we did it with this lovely double-sided um, commissioned artwork, which picks up on the colors of the volcanic rock and um, this, the waterways that flow underneath the house. Um, and then in the, in the, um, the garage is more than the garage, it's, it's also a party space. And I've always wanted to do a waffle slab, never had the opportunity to do one. So we took the opportunity here and I uh, got this beautiful um, uh, 500 mil deep waffle, which um, uh, runs over the, the garage and the gym. Um, and uh, which was no easy task to cast, but Ross Bannon did a fantastic job. And it also gave us some lovely um, unexpected surprises as per the next slide, which um, looks at the, I don't know if a Tesla's ever looked as good as this, quite frankly. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, and on the, we took the opportunity to work with, on the next slide, the um, uh, possibilities that Concrete afforded us. So this is more than just a column, it turned into kind of a swan's neck sculptural object, which allows supports the room above the front door, but also gives us a seat for people to sit, take their shoes off or wait for somebody who's coming out from inside. And then on the next slide, we're looking back at the living room. And so, you know, we always believe that clients have to occupy places and make them themselves and encourage them to bring all their objects and artworks and um, uh, uh, cushions in this case. Um, uh, we worked on the interiors with this with Sonia Cotter. Um, and you can see here also the sort of center of the photograph is the eight meter long island bench. And on the next slide, you can see um, that it was cast, the bottom half of it is cast in the concrete. And then the top half is a Corian top, which was gently lowered over the top of the concrete. Um, and we called it an orca for obvious reasons partly because it looks a bit like an orca, but also um, there are orca floating up and down or, or swimming up and down the harbour just outside sometimes. So it seemed like a nice connection with the harbour. Um, and um, then the last slide just shows the west, eastern end of the house at night and you get the sense of the glow of the uh, spaces with the lighting and the timber and uh, reflecting off the beautiful creamy concrete. That's me. Thank you. Well done, Peter. That's uh, that is a, a beautiful, beautiful home, and you must be so proud of of the outcome. Um, it would have presented a lot of challenges, I guess, from design to discussions with the likes of Ross at Bannon Construction about how they're going to actually implement and and execute some of the, uh, particularly the um, the garage ceiling. I guess was a little bit of a learning curve for him. Um, how did you get it? How did you get around sort of design and then? Was it was it engine was the engineer highly involved in the, obviously the strengthening of the floor through to the ceiling and then or was that through Ross? How does that work? No, no, we work very closely with um, engineers Brown and Thompson on that. Uh, the the Ross's um, input. Well, Ross turns the mixing of concrete into a bit of a black art, so he's got all sorts of additives and, and flow flow um, uh, additives that. Um, uh, I don't know too much about, <laughs> but we did a lot of experimenting on the surface finishes and, and the color mm -hmm. um, before we started. And then with the waffle, it was mainly um, designing it. Uh, the trickiest thing was that it's not only a structured waffle, engineered waffle, but it's also got um, services and drainage and plumbing going through the ribs. So it was a real um, a dance of reinforcing and plumbing and pipe work to get it in and get enough concrete to hold it up. But they did a fantastic job. They cast yes. the waffle onto plywood and um, and uh, resin molds, 
in two sections. So the garage was done in one section and then the bowls were repeated for the um, for the gymnasium. There's some there's some really some very uh, I think I think Ross refers to a lot of this concrete workmanship that he does as land art, and I think this mm -hmm. is a great example yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. A stunning, yeah. stunning build. And yeah. uh, what I what I love about it is the the softness that the super white uh, oxide and 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 cement has has done for that home. And I guess you know when you look at when you look at a concrete home like that, it's it's literally a spine, isn't it, to carry everything else, but Essentially, you're getting the thermal thermal mass and strength, uh, but the beauty of of the, the raw material. So that really yeah, also the other thing was, I mean, with the colour, we didn't want to didn't want to make it too white. That's a lovely cream colour, partly because if we'd bought in a white aggregate, we had to bring it from Australia, and we didn't we didn't think that was a great idea. No. Um, and so we and we didn't want it to be a sort of crisp white, too sort of clinical white. So the creaminess that came out with the grey aggregate was just perfect. Uh, we were very, very pleased with that. And also the other thing on top of the qualities you mentioned, uh, Paul, uh, was the sense of longevity. So the house isn't going anywhere. It's not going to be picked up and, and relocated to another site. Uh, and that's exactly what the client was after, was something that had a real sense of earthiness and permanence to it. Being, being by the ocean, the, the, the beauty of the, the maintenance-free aspect would be, I guess, would be a big... Uh, reasoning for using concrete in that sense, would it? Um, I tell my clients there's no such thing as a maintenance-free house, uh, uh -huh. Paul, <laughs> because they like, to think they, <laughs> they, they like to think there are um, self-washing glass and all that stuff. It's just not, no, I think uh, the house will have to be maintained and looked after like any other house. But yeah, the, the, obviously the concrete is um, not going to need repainting um, or anything for like a timber house might. Well, I'm sure there's some people out there with some questions that they'd love to fire at you once we've listened to the other the other gentlemen. So, thank you for that, Peter, and um, and we'll move right along. And I'd, I'd like to introduce Craig. Um, get in the right spot here. So, Craig South from South Architects, uh, the founding director. Craig brings 25 years of experience and dedication to unique, sustainable, and people-centered architecture. Craig really enjoys working closely with his clients throughout their architectural journey. I think that sort of sums up uh, you pretty well, Craig, from what I've what I've seen and, and looked at some of your projects. Um, so without further ado, I'd like you to um, talk to us about your fantastic copper roof house um, and down in Crossroads. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for the invitation to be involved. Um, I've basically got six, uh, eight slides um, to briefly explain the process that we went through to the, for the concrete copper home. Um, we were engaged in early 2017. Uh, the home is in Christchurch. Uh, we've got a stream boundary along the north side. Um, the brief from the client was, um, like Pete suggested, there's no zero maintenance, but as low maintenance as, as possible. Uh, permanence was a key, key part of that as well. Um, hence the concrete and the copper combination. Um, then I think during the design process, the clients found a, a church, a rural church in Canterbury designed in 1966 with a gentle curved roof. Um, and, and hence the curves got introduced um, to, the, to this home. Um, once we started talking about and presenting different material the different material options, we talked about being authentic as well. Um, so everywhere that looks like concrete is concrete. Um, and and by, by doing that, we, we did bring the uh, Peter Fowl colour, I think 651, into the mix, just to almost like Pete was bringing the, bringing, bringing the concrete to a lighter form of um, grey. Uh, I think this is one of my favourite images here, where we've got the the simple concrete forms as well as the sculptural roof shaping over the over the home. Uh, next slide, Holly. Uh, this one here is just a real simple, really sort of sketch level uh, detail showing you the three, essentially the three simple lineal concrete forms uh, running out towards the north boundary. The, to, towards the stream, and then the, co the copper is draped over to form the roof line. 
and linking the three concrete forms together. Um, while while it sounded simple with with uh, making sure the roof would float above uh, while curving in plan and in elevation, um, it was I suppose challenging for the computer modelling the guys that were doing the modelling, see the structural engineer uh, and builder um, less difficult for me. I just had the idea. Um, the next slide, Dolly. Um, so in terms of bringing the, the colour, Peter Fell colour into it, I, I think we we had the idea of without um, introducing um, special aggregates as, as white as we possibly could. Um, and I think we, yeah, 661, um, and the, oh, the image on the left is obviously the trial panel um, in the in, in the precast yard. Uh, and then the, the photo on the right, obviously the um, lifting, one of the lifting days on site. Uh, next slide, Holly. Um, we wanted to see the extent of the concrete throughout the home. Uh, and, and so the thicknesses, some were uh, thermo, thermo, thermal panels. Um, and and this photo, this photo here, I think, just shows you the extent of the propping during construction. A bit of a fun one. The the prop, obviously, the panels were propped, as well as the preparation for the in situ concrete ceiling that was in the, in the living room. Uh, next slide. Um, this one here, obviously, the image, the internal image there shows the the precast concrete panels interacting with the uh, in situ concrete ceilings. Um, we wanted to see the extent of the concrete forms throughout the home, so, so the concrete forms continue to form an interior elements as well as external elements. Um, and, and where we've needed to break panels up, rather than having panel joins or anything, we've, we've strategically placed windows um, at ends of walls or adjacent to ends of walls and, and the like to, to limit, I think we see in the whole house, I think we see two panel joins. Um, we've continued concrete ceilings as well through the office, which you see in the image here, through the den and, and living rooms, where we want the scale to be sort of, sort of a bit more cosy and a bit more intimate. Um, the, and, and I think that's probably the key with trying to get sort of a lighter version of concrete is probably to to bring the client was concerned even right through construction actually um, that it was too dark and 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 not going to be that cosy um, home that they were after. But obviously, it, it, once it's finished, they're, they're stoked. Um, next slide. Um, here we sort of just like the image on the left is, is, is a view looking back um, with kitchen on the right and, and entry corridor on the left with the even the concrete panels we we separated where we had internal cavity sliding doors. Um, they they just simply became two concrete panels. Um, and the image on the right there again showing where the uh, concrete ceilings sort of interact. Um, with the concrete fireplace and, and the and the and the walls and, and interacting with the gaboon ply that we've introduced th through the essentially the copper clad roof and, and walls on the east and west and then we've got the gaboon ply that drapes is on the inner side of the um, roof panel. Um, next panel. Um, so, so we used um, oh, the, the thermal mass concrete panels, as I've just said. Some areas were strapped in line, master bedroom um, and garage uh, and laundry type of spaces, but ev everywhere through the living spaces, we're exposing concrete inside and out. Um, there was complexities with that, I suppose, with the quality of finish, uh, form face versus floated finish, and, and, and so we through construction, working with the precaster, we nominated which 
bases were which, so, so we had a similar finish on, on adjacent panels. Um, the, oh, hang on, sorry, sorry. Um, and, and I think the, the cool thing that the uh, uh, bit of a surprise, I suppose, we, when the light shines through, we've got some timber fins there um, in the roof plane, and that they're, they're shining through at a particular time of the day and and then reflecting back off glass um, to really make a feature of, of that space in, bet in between two, two of the concrete forms. Um, so the concrete becomes a cam canvas, I suppose, for, through light and, and a backdrop for the greenery, the, the, the landscaping. And obviously from an interior point of view, it became a, a backdrop for the client's art collection. Uh, next next slide, well, and that, well, that, that's really about a brief brief overview. But um, it was a great project for for some amazing clients. Craig, um, again, another stunning home, and and again, you must be so proud to look back and after it's all finished. And I'm sure there's there's challenges with any build, but you know, to have a roof uh, like that um, is just unreal. And I just you know, you've got in situ contrary sorry, you've got in situ concrete with, with tilt panel, uh, I guess, off-site, but the colours uh, in the in situ and to the wall are very, very even and very aesthetically exactly the same from what I could see. So I think that's the value of, of the liquid oxide uh, in that sense. Um, yeah. So, you know, we that's one thing we're proud of is with our oxides is that they do come off very, very even and consistent, uh, the mixing and blending. So, you know, with the 651, that's the widest you can turn grey concrete. Um, and again, you know, like you said, it's, it's still it's still got that very slightly grey tinge to it, as, as, yeah. as Pete's house does. But it's it's it really does with the colours of the copper and the and the, the ply ceiling. I'm I'm thinking that is is that right? Um, yeah, ply ceiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful, absolutely. Um, just a question: like when you're initially looking at that build, um, was it your ideas to go concrete copper, or did you have? You know, was it and the colours was was it all your concept, or was it obviously a lot to do with the client saying, "Here's a here's a blank canvas," or did or did they have a lot of input into that? Oh, I think we there's communication around the permanence of of the concrete and the copper. Mm -hmm. um, you know that that sort of low low maintenance adding options that um, concrete obviously came into it, into the conversation, mm -hmm. um, and then it was about being authentic as possible where. Where concrete is concrete, you know that we. I got asked that on a tour recently through the house. How did you make the ceilings look so much like concrete? <laughs> I said, well, they actually are concrete, so <laughs> which yeah. quite surprises quite a few people. But um, yes. yeah, that, that was all part of that conversation early on in the design process. The authenticity of the, or in the um, copper as well. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so on the back of that. Do you love working with concrete? Is it something that you would uh, recommend to, to people going forward, or is that more of you know a personal thing from their perspective once they've seen your design? Yeah, I've, I've enjoyed using it, and we've used it on another couple of projects under construction at the moment, um, where we've got a bit more creativity with some of the shapes of the concrete, um, which you, you can if you work with good contractors. I think. Um, Obviously, from an engineering point of view, they take a little bit more to engineer, but um, working with good contractors that actually can see the vision and, and, and embrace it. Sure. And just just one other, um, keeping in mind that the Peter Fowl Colours all carry the DECLARE and EPD uh, certifications. Um, how important is that uh, with helping and designing homes going forward for the greener projects, I guess? You know, I think the, the, as the technology improves around reduction of carbon and concrete as well, I think they work hand in hand. So aligning with that and, and being certified is, is great. Um, I think the important thing is probably to improve that, the technology and the concrete yep. as well. Which, which has been worked on right yeah. now. And, and uh, that's one question that we are getting asked already is how much is carbon, how much carbon emits from concrete through its lifetime. And, so forth. So you know, there's a, there's a lot of work being done around that. Obviously, all we trying to be carbon neutral by 2050. So, um, thank you very much, Craig. Um, 
I'm what sure is? again there'll be there'll be there'll be questions after people have seen that stunning build and uh, and please if you have got questions I know I know that Holly's going to be asking you to send some in so well hopefully you're going to be sending them in now so next um, we have another fantastic build and another quality gentleman down in Christchurch region um, all three gentlemen award winning architects so you can see why when you see their stunning builds um, so I'd like to introduce Greg Young. Greg has uh, just come back from a, a beautiful holiday overseas, the lucky thing, and um, Palm Springs, I believe. So that's great. So I'm sure that uh, he's got a bit of spring in his step and would love to explain about the, the beautiful home he built up on the Summer Hills. Hi, uh, yeah, thanks, Paul. Um, and yeah, thanks for the opportunity to, to have a chat about this. Um, the house that I'm going to be talking about is quite a contrast to Craig and Pete's houses. Um, they were beautiful sculptural homes. Uh, this particular one, it's really driven by the site. Um, so the site that we're on sort of varies between 30 to 40 degree slope. So it's one of those sites that's actually really difficult to even stand on, let alone build on. Um, really tight constraints on the site. And th the clients fell in love with the view rather than the site. So. Our focus with the design was on that view um, and the architecture became a, a backdrop to it. Uh, the concrete we've used, one out of necessity um, to, to get a house on the site, we've needed to dig in. When you're digging in, you're retaining. Um, and really the only way we could retain this particular site was using concrete. Um, and the other advantage of the concrete is that because the site's so steep, it's very, very difficult to maintain the home. So the durability of the concrete really plays into our hands with that. Um, it really minimizes the maintenance that's required. So, um, Pete's touched on the fact that it still will need maintenance and it will, but nothing like uh, what a timber house would in this particular location. So overviewing the ocean, sort of out the, the Canterbury Bights, um, part of the city to, to the Alps in the background. Um, it's removed from the ocean, but with the wind coming in the right direction or the wrong direction, depending on how you look at it, you will still get hammered by sea salts. Um, massive, massive view, so lots of glass, um, which didn't help our strength any, but the concrete that we've used has. So what we've done, um, we've, we've taken a different route and the, the colors that we've used. So we, we've got walls that are just a natural concrete. We haven't played with them at all with any color. And then as a counterpoint to that, we've used um, the darkest of the Peter Fowles charcoal with 699. And within that, we've used the different sealers that um, are available to bring out different tones within the concrete. Um, so this slide here shows the same color with three different finishes on it. Um, and we've used that throughout the build um, in combination with other materials. It's a very, very simple palette in the house. It's, it's shades of gray um, in uh, the, the concrete and in a lot of timbers. We've got some natural timber and then we've got this massive, massive view. So if we flip to the next slide, gives you a bit of an understanding of the site. Uh, it actually looks a lot less steep in this photo than what it is, uh, but difficult site to work on. Um, and what we've played on with, with the exterior concrete um, is the natural tones within the concrete. Uh, we've, we looked at uh, doing it in precast panel initially, um, and the access to the site was too hard. Um, couldn't get around some of the corners with panels on the back of a truck. So this house is all in situ concrete. We've got in situ concrete walls and floors, uh, mid floor, ground floor, uh, we don't have uh, the top roofs in concrete, um, but we've also played on the fact that they, they look like, from an aesthetic point of view, the planes are defined um, where we've got uh, coloured concrete, oh, sorry, coloured concrete coming through in the mid floors. Uh, we've picked that out in some of the roof planes as well. But this is a good example of showing the natural qualities of concrete. Um, since it was in situ, we've we played with it a bit with a um, off-form finish um, using a, 
sort of a, a bandsawn timber board within the shuttering. Uh, so what at first glance looks like a weathered timber clad house is actually a concrete house. Uh, but you're seeing each one of those boards, you're seeing the grain from the timber, uh, the knots, and we've really played on that um, and brought out that texture and the color variation to, to add a lot of interest and to really bed the house in from a natural point of view. Um, it's not sculptural at all like the last two. This is architecture that's driven by site, driven by constraints. So the, the front edge of all of those roof planes uh, are kissing recession planes and height limits. And we're, we're out of the ground as much as we can to maximize view and to, to minimize the excavation. Um, so sort of where we've had to dig in, we're, we're holding up the road behind as well as part of the hill. So we didn't want to dig in too much. Um, that said, we've also got a lift going through the middle of it that has by necessity meant some decent excavation. Um, but yeah, we're into solid rock for this house. So it's, it was hard going. Um, next slide, please, Holly. So what we've done is we've taken the, the concrete from the outside through the interior as well. You can see in, in these two particular slides, or the images on this slide, how that the grain of the timber is brought through. The, the color variation within the concrete itself is, um, is expressed um, and how it starts to play off some of the interior finishes. So um, like what Craig was talking about, expressing the natural beauty of the materials. Um, we've got the concrete kept raw in a lot of instances. Um, it's warmed up with the use of timber in the ceiling. This is a cedar ceiling. Uh, there's a variation of play within the board sizes, depths, widths, um, and color within the cedar that's also reflected in the, the concrete uh, that we've expressed through. And then as a counterpoint to that, you can see on the, the image on the right that we've got a concrete floor that's been colored really, really deeply. Um, so I mean, that's probably about as black as we can go. Um, that's using the, the Peter Fell 699. Um, this is highly polished and it's got a gloss finish on it. So it's it's a counterpoint to the to the matte finish on the raw concrete. Um, and then we've played with that sort of color palette a little bit with uh, staining the the oak paneling in a black, um, the oak uh, joinery frames in black as well. And then um, on the, the image on the left, we've got some black aluminium and black reveals. Uh, they're a powder coated aluminium reveal. So we, we're playing with what is a very simple color palette, just in different, different ways, with different tones and different textures and different, different sheen levels. Um, next slide, please, Holly. So you can see, again, the, the variation that you get. Um, so the, the image on the left, where we've got your polished concrete floor, that's the same color all the way through, but we've, we've got the reflectance coming in from the glass um, that makes it appear much paler. Um, again, that, that's a black concrete, but it appears a much paler concrete, sort of shade of gray. Um, again, counterpoint against the aluminum uh, that's uh, surrounding the glazing. And then the, the image on the right, we've got uh, the, the black color again through the floating concrete treads. Uh, yeah, can't leave it off the in situ spine. Uh, where we've got the tones of the, the shadowing from the lighting um, picked up on those, those concrete uh, off, off form shuttered boards. Uh, so the, yeah, the colors play with each other. Uh, the light plays with each other and, and changes what is a very simple and consistent color palette that you're getting different colors come through from the sheen levels. Um, next slide, please, Holly. Um, we've used different sheens and different elements. So this image here is of the den. Um, it's kind of a withdrawing room. So we've gone quite dark. Uh, there's a large pivot door on the left that we can open up and you get a view out to the ocean or you close it uh, when you want to hunker down a little bit. Um, 
so that the dark blacks are a stained timber in this room, whereas the, the fireplace hearth uh, is your Peter Fowl 699, but it's got a different sealer on it. Um, so this is using a, a natural sealer, which makes the, the hearth appear much lighter, even though it's the same sort of dark charcoal color through it, it appears lighter. And that's also partially because that um, we've got dark timber stained beside it, and then we've got black steel above it. So again, playing with the sheen levels, uh, the reflectance, um, with effectively what is the same color. Uh, next slide, please, Holly. Um, so we're picking up similar sort of things on this, this image. So the fireplace on the left has got um, the mantelpiece and the hearth as the same color as the floor on the right, but different sheen levels on all three. So on the polished concrete floor, uh, we've got the, the high gloss uh, glazed sealer. Um, the mantelpiece on this one is with a natural sealer and the, um, the hearth has got the acrylic sealer. So same color on all three of them, but different sheen levels uh, make them appear slightly differently. And then in contrast to the, to the natural concrete on the fireplace surrounding it, which again, you've got the variation of the concrete plus the variation in texture uh, with the off shuttering um, and um, you know, the texture of the, of the boards coming through. So same color, uh, very similar palette, but just playing with them in different ways. Um, and I think that's the last of my slides. So you know, I haven't really focused much on the architecture of the home, but looked more at the different finishes you can achieve with the concretes and the colors and the sheen levels. Um, which is probably quite an interesting counterpoint to the two previous homes. Another stunning home, Greg, really is. It's, um, again, you must be so proud of how it's turned out and, and, it, and it sounded like it was a major challenge uh, and the results just stunning. So, so thank you for that. And, and just referring to your polished concrete floor, um, the high gloss floor inside the, the, the house, um, obviously, polished concrete floors offer low maintenance, um, aesthetically pleasing to the eye and thermal mass from, from the heat coming in through windows that they, they act as a natural um, heat battery, if you like, as, as, a, a, as a way of describing it. Um, how did the influence of using polished concrete happen? Was that a, an idea of yours in the design or was it something driven by the client? Um, it was... A combination of um, what I wanted to achieve architecturally, uh, what we needed to achieve from a maintenance point of view for the owners. Uh, they've got several cats and, and a dog. Um, so, yeah, they, they can be pretty hard on floors, um, especially the dog. Um, so the, yep. the concrete made sense there. Uh, we needed it structurally to tie everything together as well. Um, and it gave me the opportunity to, to moderate the, the heat gains um, and heat losses within the home as well from a thermal point of view. Uh, we couldn't have big roof overhangs um, on this home because of the, the planning constraints. So we, we get a decent amount of heat through that glazing um, and we needed a heat sink. So your concrete does that and it really helps to moderate it. Um, it also gave us a nice counterpoint um, by playing with the highly polished nature of it compared to uh, the, the really matte finish on, on the concrete that we've exposed in the walls. So you run the risk uh, with concrete of it appearing to be lifeless and um, cold, um, whereas changing your finishes um, really helps you combat that. Um, and the reflectance really accentuated the, the large view, the, the amount of glass we've got in that elevation. So we've, we've effectively glazed the floor to a point as well. Um, so you've got a real interest play, um, so almost from a sculptural point of view or an artistic point of view within the floor itself with the shadowing and the reflections. So look, there's a number of reasons for it and um, they all just kind of played into each other.
yeah, the, the Fix 99 Black is, is the blackest black that we do. And it's, it really, uh, you know, we do a number of homes in it and it really just throws such a different light and different angles through through a home when you walk through and, and, and you know, reflective with timber, timber hue colours. It, it really is stunning. Um, one of the one of the things that that we do pride ourselves on is having the different type of sealers for different situations and and all three homes have had um products from the peter fell uh range that's been developed over 30 odd years since peter fells first hit the market and and uh we're always working to to bring the latest technology to to assist with these builds um I guess Holly, we've we've hopefully got some questions for these fine gentlemen, and uh, anything I can help with, please. Um, how are we going there? Have we got something to go so with? You all must have been very thorough in your talks because we haven't had any questions come through. <laughs> um, we are at the forty-five minutes, so um, I know that people um, do have to jump off. But if you do, just maybe a last push. If anyone does have any questions feel free to flick them through now. Um, otherwise, you're more than welcome to reach out to Peter Fell um, directly on their um, ARCAPRO profile. Um, and you can even talk to, um, you know, inquire to Pete, um, Craig or Greg through their ARCAPRO profiles as well. Um, and there is an email that's on the screen at the moment, info at archipro.co.nz, if you wanted to flick anything through and then um, we can facilitate in, in your queries. Um, but I just wanted to say a massive thank you um, for joining us on today's webinar and um, massive thank you to Pete, Craig and Greg for sharing your expertise and talking about your stunning projects. We just, we absolutely love them. Um, so it was really cool to hear some more insight into them. Um, but I think, oh, we've got maybe one question that's popped in. Oh, just a congratulations. We've got some fans, so that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So thank you so much, guys. It's been, um, yeah, great to um, chat with you all. And thank you, Paul, for facilitating today. No um, problem. It's been a pleasure. Peter Fell. Awesome. Thank, thank you very you. much. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. See you later. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Holly. Thank yes. you, man. Really appreciate it.